a non-alcoholic beer is nothing new, but making it taste great is something new. And being someone who has been around a lot of entrepreneurs in this space, you guys are doing it right. What were some of the things, you know, I always say great businesses either solve a problem or serve a need. I think you did both. Was that your intention when you uh, both started out in the space to figure out this problem of, you know, why can't this stuff taste good and fill a need of branding it correctly and making it taste good? My business partner and I had known each other for, we had been friends for about 15 years. And when we sort of reconnected at a holiday party and realized we were the only ones without drinks in our hands, um, we needed to know why. We're like, what's your story? What's wrong with you? Why do you not have a drink in your hands? You're at, you're in a social function. Why are you not drinking? And we found that just to be just as fascinating conversation around our relationship with alcohol. And neither of us identify as, as problem drinkers, but, but both of us, you know, neither of us uh, drink. So we knew there were more people like us. There wasn't really a whole lot of data around who this customer was, why they were choosing non-alcoholic beer, what the choices were that informed them. We just knew there weren't a whole lot of options back then. So to us, we asked the question, why aren't there more options? And why is, it such, why is bringing non-alcoholic beer to a party so embarrassing? Back then, there were, there were so few choices. It said something about you when you brought it to a party, you know what I mean? And people wanted to know why. It just, to us, that felt unfair, you know? There was nothing from a marketing perspective that we thought was interesting. Uh, Hairless Dog is about absolutely, you know, being who you are. We want to be known for what we are rather than what we're not, which is a 0.0 beverage, which is also a differentiator to, to your point, fulfill a need. You know, it's interesting for me because I'm a sporadic drinker. I have so many events to go to. I fell into a trap of continually drinking because of the social pressure, because if I wasn't drinking, I didn't want to answer, why aren't you drinking? And then there's some suspicion that I was an alcoholic or I had a problem. Like you said, all these things. So I used to just pour, you know, soda water in a line. And I realized nobody ever asked me a question. I would just be very clever about how I ordered it. So nobody heard me and said, oh, you're not drinking? Then expecting some kind of story. Instead of just saying, hey, you know what? I just want to be productive tomorrow and I love the taste of a good beer. And I think Hairless Dog for me was that first opportunity. Not only could I do it, but if the questions came up because of the way it's branding, if they actually do come up for me, it's, hey, because I love the taste of beer and I got a lot to do tomorrow. You know, what have you seen that you didn't anticipate from serving that need and and solving the problem? I think that neither my business partner or I saw sort of the, the wind in our sails and the lift that we would get from the rising of the sober curious. That ended up being a trend that we did not see coming. So we thought that in the very beginning, we knew there would be people like us. I mean, there were probably people that wanted to make smart decisions because they had a big meeting the next day. We're tired of having to explain, you know, to your point, David, um, alcohol is the only, and again, we are not anti-alcohol. Most of our customers do enjoy a glass of wine or two once in a while, but it's the only drug that you have to explain why you don't do it. Even if, if someone <laughs> offers, if I go to someone's house and they offer me a glass of milk and I say, no, I'm dairy free. No one wants to know why or what happened or what my story is. But with fear or wine, you have to, you have to be ready to go with the story. But in that light, we saw sort of in, as people become more conscious about what they put in their bodies more than ever before, people want new options. And the rise of the sober curious is here. People say, well, what's it like? I've tried cutting it out for January and not having any alcohol in January. But now there's, you know, sober October is now a thing. Dry July, mindful March is right around the corner. So people are, are questioning what they're putting in their bodies more than ever before. And that includes uh, examining alcohol. 